Appreciate y'all tuning in. My name is Jacob Thornton. I have a website down here you can go to review this video and other videos and other articles which I post. Links to some other websites in which you can find a material that is good for study. And so orbill530.com, my phone number and my email, you can get a hold of me, call me, text me, 530-358-0400, orbill530 at iCloud.com. And so I'm going to be Continuing the series which we began in the past few videos regarding Jesus and in the first video we studied where is Jesus right now and we learned that Jesus is in heaven. Jesus walked the earth. He died as a sacrifice for our sins. He was buried for three days and then he resurrected and then he walked the earth for 40 days and then he ascended into heaven where he is and in the last video we looked how long will Jesus be in heaven? And we learn that that is until death is destroyed and there's the resurrection of the dead. And so really no one knows. We're going to learn from here that only the Father knows. This video is going to be about how long is Jesus going to be in heaven? And as you see at the top, it's a surprise. No one knows except the Father. The Father knows when Jesus will descend from heaven that second time. And so we have this time period between Jesus's ascension into heaven and then his second coming out of heaven. And we're living in that time period. He's in heaven. He hasn't descended from heaven that second time yet. And so we have this period where forgiveness is extended to all nations through the blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross for our sins. And so we have this time period where we can study the teachings of Jesus turn away from our sins, turn to God, receive forgiveness. That way, when Jesus comes from heaven that second time, he will take us and we will go to heaven where God is. And this is, on, this is not only a promise for those who are living when Christ descends from heaven a second time, but this promise includes all those who have died since Adam. And so this time, though, that Jesus descends from heaven the second time to take to heaven individuals who are going to heaven, no one knows and we we're going to review some of those teachings today um, these teachings are found primarily from jesus before he died so jesus was born a baby grew up a man lived a perfect life and during his ministry these are the teachings which he taught regarding his second descent from heaven and he goes on at and so if you all want to stay tuned for Past this video series, we're going to be covering Matthew 24, Mark chapter 13, Luke chapter 21, the Olivet Discourse. And so here, though, in Matthew chapter 24, we read Jesus telling his disciples that heaven and earth is going to pass away. But my word shall not pass away. That shows the strength, the stability of Jesus's words. Heaven and earth are going to pass away. Jesus's words are not going to pass away. That's how stable, that's how um, permanent his words are. And it says, but of that day and hour, regarding to heaven and earth passing away, of that day and hour, knoweth no man, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. You know, you look up in history, there's been a lot of individuals who proclaim that they have this knowledge that Jesus was going to descend from heaven the second time on a certain day. But Jesus, long before those individuals predicted that, Jesus from his teachings says, of that day and hour knoweth no man. So you know what? An individual might say, Jesus is coming on this day for sure. Well, you can guarantee that <laughs> most likely he's not coming on that day because it says here, no man knows that day. And so here it goes on to tell us what that day will be like. And we will learn that the second descent from Jesus from heaven is going to be a day of surprise, not only for believers, but also for unbelievers, more for unbelievers than it is for believers. But no one knows when this day will happen. It will come as a surprise to all who dwell on the face of the earth. And so it says, as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So it came as a surprise. We're going to learn about that. For as in the days that were before the flood, talking about the flood of Noah's day, they were eating and drinking, 
marrying and giving in a marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. The idea is life was going on. They're living their lives. They're getting married, thinking they're going to have this long life on the earth. And it says, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and that they knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so sh shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. It will be a day of surprise where individuals think, we have a long time to live on this earth. It's been here since the beginning, and it will continue. But the idea presented in the scripture is no, it won't. Continuing this section, then shall two be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding in the mill. The one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. So here this example is used for the purpose of showing the surprise. There would be two. One would be destroyed and one would obtain salvation. One would be saved. And so it's a surprise. These two were together and one um, would be taken in destruction. You know not what hour your Lord doth come, but know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house, meaning allowed his house to be broken up. And so, therefore, be ye also ready, for in such an hour ye think not the Son of Man cometh. So the idea is, is that when a person watches over their house for a thief, they are going to be ready, not knowing when that thief comes, but when the thief comes, they're going to be ready. So you have two types of individuals who, when a thief comes in, neither of them know when the thief comes, but one of them will be prepared and the other will be unprepared. He goes on then to say, Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat, meaning food, in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. So the idea is, is that this individual is doing what God wants them to do. So when Christ comes at his second descent from heaven, this individual will be the individual who was like the man watching for the thief. He'd be prepared. And so Jesus goes on to say, Verily I say unto you that he shall make him, that person who's ready, ruler over all his goods. But and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he's not aware of, and shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So you have, again, the idea of two individuals. When Jesus comes, individuals will be living on the earth. And here's the difference between those two types of individuals. One will not be prepared. This individual who um, knew that Christ would be coming again was not prepared. And then you have the individual who was prepared. And so that should hopefully help us examine ourselves. Are we prepared? Christ could come at any time. You know, a lot of people think that they have um, until they die to live. But that's not the case because Jesus could come any day, any hour. And so your life, my life, could be cut short on the earth. And you can die before you even walk out the front door of your house. You can um, experience the second coming of the Lord. No one knows when that day will be. And so the idea is living prepared as if that day could come today. This is Mark chapter 13. This also is parallel or harmonious with Matthew chapter 24 and also the next section of scripture, which we were going to be looking at in Luke chapter 21. But he tells them here again, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. So again, we learn that this heaven and this earth, which we're currently living in, is going to pass away. And so in the book of Isaiah, this phrase is used about a new heavens and a new earth. And there it's reference to after their Babylonian captivity, their Babylon, uh, the Babylon oppressor would be destroyed. And so the Jews would experience a type of new heavens and new earth. It would be a new world for them where without Babylon in it. In the book of Revelation, we read it talking about a new heavens and a new earth. And there, it's talking about, just like the book of Isaiah, it's 
figurative and it's figurative for a new type of world without the Roman oppressor in it that Christians would be able to experience. But if you read here and in Second Peter chapter 3, this is not figurative. This is reference to a new heavens, a new earth, um, which will come our way. And this heaven and this earth, which we're currently living on, is going to pass away. It's going to be destroyed. This world we live on is not our forever home. And Jesus says, but of that day and hour, reference to heaven and earth passing away, knoweth no man. No, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. And so if we read in Acts chapter 3, if we remember, it says that Jesus is in heaven until the restitution of all things, and then he will be sent. The idea is Jesus being sent is because the Father is going to send him. It says not even Jesus knows. It's just Jesus is in heaven until the Father says, it's my will that you go now. And Jesus will go when the Father tells him to go. Take ye heed and watch and pray, for ye know not when the time is. Again, it's just the idea of surprise. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at even or at midnight or at the cock crowing or in the morning. Lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping, and what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. So this was not a teaching just for Jesus' apostles. This would have been a teaching for everyone. And as we read, and let's see, let me pull it up here. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, we read that that teaching about Jesus descending from heaven and all individuals should be ready for it was not only for the Jews. That was also for the Gentiles. When the Thessalonica Gentiles were converted, it says that they turned to God from idols to serve the living and the true God. And they were waiting for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead. So this idea of waiting for Jesus to come from heaven was not only for the Jews. It was also for the Gentiles who didn't even live in Judea or Jerusalem. And so Jesus says, what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. This means that Jesus is calling the world to live a lifestyle of faithfulness until his second descent from heaven. This is Luke chapter 21. Where Jesus again says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. So again, Jesus is affirming the permanent nature, the, the stability and the faithfulness of his word. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that day, reference to heaven and earth passing away, come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass in the stand before the Son of Man. In the book of Revelation, it talks about standing before um, God and the Lamb on the day of judgment. And there that's reference to the Roman oppressors. If you read there, it's in Revelation, I think, chapter, um, it's either 4 five or six and the idea is is that judgment was coming against these individuals and who would stand on the day of judgment well those who are forgiven those who are on god's side would stand and so here this is reference to jesus's actual descent from heaven which is going to affect not only jews not only gentiles but it's going to affect all that dwell on the face of the whole earth. And it says, pray that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass. And that's reference if you read in Luke chapter 21, the beginning of those sections, all those troubles which they were going to go through. And then also here, and not only escape all those things mentioned, all those troubles and hardships, but also to stand before the Son of Man. This idea of when Christ comes. They were to prepare themselves to be ready for that day. It would come as a snare to all of them that, dwace, that dwell on the face of the whole earth. And so that's why we read in 
Acts chapter 17, I think it's verse 31, where it says, God commands all men everywhere to repent because he has appointed a day in which he will judge the world by the man who he raised from the dead. And it says, and he has given us assurance of this by raising him from the dead. And so this coming of Christ is going to affect everyone. And so here in these next two passages, we read a parable about preparation. When Christ descends from heaven a second time, heaven and earth pass away. There's the resurrection of the dead. What side will you be on? Will you be with those who are prepared or will you be with those who are unprepared? And so here's a parable given by Jesus that then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins. So when Christ comes from heaven that second time, here is a picture of what that is going to look like. And it's just presenting the idea that individuals will be prepared and other individuals will not be prepared. And so he goes on to say, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom, and five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. So here's the idea. The foolish had no oil. The wise had oil, and so they didn't know, neither knew when the Lord, their Lord, was coming. And so the wise had oil in case at midnight during the nighttime. If the Lord came, they would have oil to light their lamps, but the foolish didn't take oil. They didn't consider that their Lord might have came during the nighttime. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept, and at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. So now we are going to read a trouble facing the foolish. They have no oil. They're not going to have enough oil to light their lamps to go from where they are to where the bridegroom is. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not the day, nor the hour, wherein the Son of Man cometh. And so here is the idea where this day was going to be a surprise and individuals would be prepared. Other individuals would not be prepared. And once the door is shut, that door of opportunity is now closed. And so we have until this time to make that preparation change our lives and um, make ourselves useful vessels for the Lord so he can use us to accomplish his will. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, we read about this idea that this day would be a surprise not only to Christians, but especially to non-Christians. And so he says, concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. So they didn't know when the time nor the season was of the, the Lord's um, second coming from heaven. But look at this. And also they didn't know, but neither do the wicked. It says, for when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. And so these would be like the individuals Jesus spoke about when the thief came. They were prepared to protect their house. These individuals were unprepared, saying peace and safety, not knowing that a thief was going to come. And so we have presented here this idea of two types of individuals who will be alive on the earth at Christ's coming and individuals will be prepared and individuals will be unprepared. And so our goal is to be those among the prepared. And so if you have any questions or comments, you can go ahead and send me a message. Um, you want me to do a video on a certain topic, you can go ahead and send me a message. I'll make a video on that topic. You know, we have here, how are we going to prepare for Jesus' second coming from heaven? 
Well, we're going to listen and obey his teachings. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 9 tells us Jesus is the author of eternal life to all that obey him. So, having been perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation to all that obey him. This is how we prepare for his final coming from heaven to receive eternal salvation rather than eternal destruction, eternal punishment. And so Jesus said, repent and be baptized for your forgiveness. Turn away from your sins and to be baptized in water so you can be forgiven by the blood of Jesus. And he will add you to his one body, to his one church. And that is the church of Christ. Romans chapter 16, verse 16. It mentions the churches of Christ and they salute you to who Paul was writing. And so that's what I hope for the community. That individuals will choose to turn away from what they do wrong, turn away from false teachings, turn away from wickedness, and turn to God so that they might obey Jesus Christ and receive eternal life. Because there is a day coming in which he will come and bring eternal life with him. But if we're not among those who are prepared, we're not going to be the recipients of those receiving eternal life. I hope you get in contact with me. I hope this has been beneficial for you studying regarding this day. And I have a few more videos after this regarding this subject. We're going to look more into it regarding the day when Christ comes again um, in his second descent from heaven when there's the resurrection of the dead, passing away of heaven and earth. And so if you have any questions or comments, you can get a hold of me and go to my website if you want to watch further videos that I have posted. Have a nice rest of your day.